Hey guys, it's Drew Brashler with DBB Audio. Today I am at CCV in Phoenix, Arizona, and I'm doing some new RF coordination at the nine campuses that we have here. So today I'm going to be specifically making a video on inclusion groups and how that can better suit our wireless coordinations to suit our needs at our campuses here. And so we have some 600 megahertz uh, TV channels that have moved down in the 4 and 500 megahertz band. So I'm wanting to make sure that none of our RF microphones are sitting on top of some powerful TV stations that could cause some interference. Now inside of wireless workbench, inclusion groups allow me to specify certain parts of the spectrum for my wireless products. So say if I had two different types of wireless products, that were in the same band, wireless microphones and IEMs. And I wanted to place both of these in this spectrum, but I wanted my IEMs to be on a completely clear, clean TV channel, whereas I would be okay having a little bit of noise on my wireless uh, microphones because the receivers are a little bit better on those then I can place, using inclusion groups, my wireless microphones in a little bit of a noisy TV channel, whereas my in-ear monitors need to be in completely empty TV space to ensure that quality is there for my musicians. Now, let's go ahead and dive into inclusion groups inside of Wireless Workbench. So I have my inventory here, uh, and I have a whole bunch of different wireless products, and I want to assign any of my critical items into a completely noise-free space in my coordination. And anything that's kind of the eh, backup or non-critical items, I can place in more of a little bit of a noisy area in my coordination. So I have two scan files here. I have one that's through the directional antenna into my antenna distribution, which the receivers plug directly into. And then I also did an omnidirectional antenna scan up on the stage. Now, why would you do that? Well, when we're only using the directional antenna, we're seeing a very small portion of the RF environment of our room. If we're using a directional antenna, that's only taking the RF in into consideration that's in the direction of that. So if we were using a shotgun microphone and you were pointing it at something, anything that's back here in the null of the antenna, it's not listening to. It's only listening to what it's pointing at, which is the case with a directional antenna. So if you had an in-ear pack on a musician up on the stage, that omnidirectional antenna is going to be an omnidirectional pickup. So it's going to be placing an omnidirectional microphone on the stage, and now you're going to be picking up everything, not just what you're looking at. So I always do an omnidirectional scan to get a good RF environment picture of what the musician's in-ear pack is going to be looking at. This is going to be a perfect example of that. Because right here, if I was to place a in-ear pack on channel 16, it looks like a completely clear, empty location. But in reality, if we did that full omnidirectional scan, there's a ton of noise right here. So there is a TV channel that is a low power TV channel in this area that just the directional antenna is not pointed at. So this is why we always want to include an omnidirectional scan in our coordination so we can get a very clear picture. Now, inclusion groups. I've already made some inclusion groups for this, but the, the purpose of inclusion groups is to specify any of my clean TV channels. Now, we can also use inclusion groups if we wanted to separate groups of things by a guard band, let's say a space in between two areas that we were going to be placing, say, our in-ears and our wireless microphones. Now, the benefit of separating those two things is we can reduce the IMD, or intermodulation distortion product, interaction between the two uh, types of devices. But today I'm going to be using inclusion groups to specify where I want to place certain items. So back into Wireless Workbench here, I can see that I have some areas that have absolutely no TV channels. So 21, 23, 28, 30, 32. And then I can also see that I have some areas that are low noise they're still below this threshold, but they're low noise enough where I can place a wireless microphone and still be okay noise-wise. But I wouldn't want to place a, an in-ear receiver here because then the musician, as they're moving around, they might have some of that noise kind of come in and then that might cause a little bit of a dropout to happen on their in-ears, which is not good for them on stage. So we can do inclusion groups by going into our Spectrum tab and clicking down into Inclusions. And I'm just going to open these up. So I've already made these, but I've made two inclusion groups, Clean TV 
and Dirty TV. And we can add another group by pressing this plus button. And here it is. Here's this group one. And we can press uh, in and add TV stations. So you can select TV stations, so say channel 30. Or if we were wanting to add in a range, we could say, OK, I want to have an inclusion group of 600 to 608. And I want to make sure that that's included. So we can now see that I have TV channel 30 and spectrum 600 to 608. And that is in my group one. Now, I'm going to go ahead and delete that. But in my clean TV channel, I have 19, 21, 23, 28, and so on and so forth. Now, my dirty TV inclusion group, I include the clean TV channels, but I also include any TV channels that I would be okay placing wireless products in if they weren't uh, critical items. So we can see that I have 16, I have 19, that's a very low noise station. I also have 25, but then we also have those clean TVs of 21, 23, 28, those are all in there. So I've made these and we can see that there is colors here. So I have clean TV. If I right click, I can assign a color for it to display up here. So once I've done that, I'm going to save this and now that's going to pop up up here. Now, I could go in and manually exclude TV channels or even lower my threshold. But what that's not going to do is it's not going to allow me to manually place any of my critical items in 23, but not 25. So over in the inventory tab, I can now go ahead and assign some of these things. So my adults one through six, I'm going to select those. Over on the right hand side, I'm gonna click into coordination, inclusion group, and I'm gonna place those in clean TV and press apply. Now my number one microphones are going to be in clean, apply. Uh, my number two are backup. And so those can be dirty. And so there is a number one and a lead. So clean TV. These are going to be dirty. And my in-ears in my adult building are clean. And then I have this FOHQ lighting. Uh, this sits in my front house uh, at this specific campus uh, just for my lighting engineer to listen to click. And so because it's sitting right next to him, it's a very loud uh, channel. So I can have that on Dirty TV. So now that I've done that, I can go over to my frequency coordination tab. And we can go ahead and add our frequencies from our inventory. So we can see uh, that as we're looking through here, I have all my clean TV and dirty TV. Now, the great thing about this is I can separate them um, and move them around. And so the way that Wireless Workbench works is anything that's at the top gets coordinated first. Anything that's at the bottom gets coordinated last. And so you can move those things around. But also what's nice about this is I can create some backup frequencies in my dirty TV and some backup frequencies in my clean TV, specifying critical items with non-critical items. So that's one thing that I'll do is I'll go and right click and add some backup frequencies to these. And same thing with my LK building. I have all of those. So let's go ahead and calculate. So we can see that I can't get a backup frequency here on the standard, uh, but everything else is looking good in all green. So I can see that in here, I've went ahead and placed any of my critical items in those noise-free areas. And then I have this, uh, this 16, which is going to be uh, one of my G3 halos. Uh, that is in a dirty TV channel. But the receiver is a good enough receiver that it can block out this noise because it's underneath this, this threshold that's set here. So if I was wanting to add a couple more frequencies and get this working, I could go over to my compatibility tab and press more frequencies. Now the basic difference between these is this is going to tell Wireless Workbench where you want to place your frequencies and how far you want that frequency to be away from some intermod distortion. And over on the right hand side here, we can see 2T, 2T, 3T, 3O, 5O. What does this all mean? Well, 2T stands for two transmitter. 3T stands for three transmitter. 3O stands for third order. 5O is fifth order. 
7-0 is seventh order. So these are the order of type of harmonics. Now I do have a blog post about harmonics and IMD distortion. It's pretty interesting to go look at. It's a whole lot of math. It's pretty insane how much math there is behind an RF coordination like this, which makes me super happy for Wireless Workbench. And that it's a free product. It's crazy. So I can go and place more frequencies. Now if I went to more frequencies instead of standard, you'll see that this third, uh, three transmitter third order is going to place um, my, on standard, it's going to place this channel 125 kilohertz away from any inner mod. If I went to more frequencies, it's going to drop that to zero. Same thing with the two uh, transmitter fifth order, it's going to drop that from 125 down to zero. Now the benefit of doing this is it gives me more frequencies available. The bad part about this is it can, in at times, cause some intermod distortion to happen and maybe get some interference in my wireless products. So I do need to be careful to um, make sure that I don't have any issues uh, by testing things before it's actual show time. But if I went to more frequencies and I went and calculated this again, of course I would be just fine and I can go ahead and add in a whole bunch of more backup frequencies here now that we're in this more frequencies. And, you know, I can just keep ca calculating more frequencies and adding backups. And at some point in time, I'm going to limit myself to how many things I can actually get. Now, wrapping up here, inclusion groups are a really good way of specifying where you want certain wireless products, those critical items for your service. And you can have those non-critical items in a little bit of noisy area, but this just gives you the ability to really take wireless workbench and make it work in the way that you want it to rather than trying to figure out which areas had noise and which don't and but you can still have that really good wireless coordination that you want using inclusion groups so if you have any questions feel free to post on my blog and otherwise thank you so much for watching